Welcome to the video about important checkmating patterns that you must know before beginning a game of chess. All right, so you've learned so much already, but if you're not familiar with these pitfalls in the first few moves of the game, you could find yourself losing before the game even really gets started. So without further ado, here we go. When you first learn the game of chess, you may hear the phrase four move checkmate. Four move checkmate that, four move checkmate this. Although that's the most famous early mating pattern in chess, there are actually two that require fewer moves than that four move checkmate. Obviously, this requires some pretty poor play from the side who ends up losing. But just so you're familiar with the possibilities, this is the first one. This is called Fool's Mate, and it is the two-move checkmate. Check this out. So if white plays the two worst moves possible in the game, black can win in two moves. Pawn to f3. Black develops his e-pawn. Now white has to play pawn to g4, and amazingly enough, queen to h4 is checkmate. All right, so obviously, if you're white, this is one of the reasons why we don't develop our wing and flank pawns first. We develop our central ones and develop our pieces, okay? On the flip side, if you're black and your opponent opens with a move like pawn to f3, or pawn to g4, for example, you know, you should respond with the very simple and logical pawn to e5, because there's a chance that, hey, you never know. If the person has no idea what they're doing, you might see f3 on the board, and the game is over just like that. So this is the two-move checkmate. Not much more to say about it, just be aware of it. Before getting to the four-move checkmate, there is a three-move checkmate. All right, so this is from White's perspective now. The three-move checkmate is as follows. Pawn to e4, pawn to e5, White develops the queen, and now, of course, Black has to make the worst move possible in the position for this to happen. But if Black plays king to e7, lo and behold, queen takes e5 is indeed checkmate. This is the only set of moves where this three-move checkmate can happen, okay? So you just have to be aware of it. Obviously, this should never happen in any of your games, guys, because way back here on move one, as you'll see when I go over the four-move checkmate in the next subsequent example, queen to h5 is a dubious move. We don't want you developing your queen out early like this. We want you to rely on classic chess principles of correct development, bringing your minor pieces like your knights and your bishop towards the center, king side before queen side. Moves like this are very elementary and easily defended against, which we will cover in the next position. So finally, here we are, the legendary four-move checkmate also called the scholar's mate. You may have heard about this phrase before even learning how to move the pieces or play chess because it's very, very famous. So a couple things about the four move checkmate. Number one, you of course have to be aware and familiar of it and how it works. And number two, understand that it's very easy to defend against and you should never try the four move checkmate on anyone who has a knowledge about chess because it's very easily defended against and it makes your pieces not well placed. All right, so this is a very beginner's way of playing. You should actually hope that your opponent tries the four move checkmate against you because it results in you having a good position as long as, of course, you defend against it properly. All right, so here we go. This is the four move checkmate pattern. Pawn to e4, pawn to e5, everything's normal. White does the same move like in the previous example, queen to h5, attacking the pawn on e5. Instead of losing immediately with king to e7, we played the correct move here, which is very logical, knight to c6, developing one of our knights, 
towards the center of the board and protecting the pawn e5. White now plays bishop to c4 with hopefully you guys see the very obvious threat of queen takes f7 checkmate. All right. Now, obviously, if black doesn't see this for whatever reason and completely ignores it, plays a move like knight to f6, queen takes pawn as checkmate and all she wrote. Okay. But look, it's so easy to defend against this. All right. So check this out. After bishop to c4, you can simply play pawn to g6. Okay. This not only blocks the queen for the checkmate threat, but also attacks it. All right, we learned about that technique in the video about how to defend against checkmates. All right, so let's say the queen retreats. Again, same threat, guys. Be careful. Checkmate in one. But again, we remain calm. Very easy defense here. We'll see if you can guess it. Best move, knight to f6. Again, we are developing our pieces. Knights before bishops towards the center of the board. This knight is protected by the queen on d8, so, you know, the white queen cannot take it. They want to lose the queen, right? And as white is flailing around, moving the same piece three times, right? This queen is going all over the place. We are simply defending against the threats of the position, right? And improving our pieces via development as well, all right? So this is a classic case of seeing a beginner player as white, versus a more experienced player as black. We defend against the obvious threats, we don't panic, and we continue our development. Meanwhile, white is, you know, losing time, playing hope chess, making silly threats to no avail. All right, so the former checkmate doesn't have to start with this queen to h5 on move two either. Maybe even more common is starting with bishop to c4, right? So if black were to go knight to c6, for example, white can either go queen to h5 or queen to f3. Again, very, very common thing to see. And of course, if black just forgets or ignores it and makes a random move, this is checkmate immediately. But we're smarter than that, right, guys? Again, easiest defense, just plopping that on f6, cutting the connection and blocking interposing against the mate threat right and if white's insisting on you know attacking the s7 pawn further there is very easy ways to defend it we're increasing our development meanwhile white is losing its okay but honestly the easiest way to just defend against the four move checkmate guys if you're black and you you're in this position after bishop to c4 for example just develop the king's knight right, to f6, very logical, this just kills any four move checkmate ideas immediately, right, because the queen obviously can't go to h5, because you'll just take it, and queen to f3 has no threat whatsoever, because you are already stopping this checkmate from happening. All right, so that is the scholar's mate in a nutshell, nothing more complicated than that, Again, you should not do this if you're white, and if you're black, you should actually hope for your opponent to try this on you, because as long as you stop it and defend against it with a simple developing move, like knight to f6, knight to c6, etc., you will be in a good position to continue the game. All right, last but not least, the most complicated example in this video is going to go over a very common opening trap. This is much more lengthy than a three or four move checkmate, but it's an important pattern to remember and memorize nonetheless, okay? So this is called Damiano's defense, all right? And this is a pattern that you should know from the white side and what you should not do from the black side. All right, so here in this example, we develop our knight to f3. Of course, as we've gone over in previous videos, a move like knight to c6 is most common and perfectly good for black. However, in this position on move two, 
if black continues the game with pawn to f6, this is called Damiano's defense, and it is a big trap for black. So if you're not familiar with this, it's obviously quite complicated to see from scratch because it's a multi-move combination, okay? But this is why we are here to provide you with this information to help you in your games. All right, so after pawn to f6, the correct move for white here is knight takes e5. You might be going, huh? That looks like an advantageous exchange for black. I am giving up my knight worth three points for just one pawn worth one point. However, thinking further ahead, we can follow this up now. Queen to h5 check. So this situation makes all the difference, whereas in the last position I told you that you should not be developing your queen to h5, this position is different. Because this check is actually very powerful. And now black only has two options. If black goes pawn to g6, blocking the check, now white takes the pawn on e5 with check, and the problem for black is that whatever he does, whatever piece blocks on e7, or if he moves the king, it doesn't matter. The rook falls on h8, and white is completely winning. So when the smoke clears, white has actually won a rook and two pawns for a knight, which is obviously hugely advantageous for white. Okay, so once again, after f6, you sacrifice your knight temporarily on e5, when black recaptures, check, and if black chooses to block, take on e5, followed by take on h8, and white is winning. However, if black chooses door number two, and the second option, and decides to move the king to e7, white continues with queen takes pawn once again, pretty obvious. Unfortunately, this is not checkmate, right? Like we went over the three move checkmate. If a piece or pawn were here on f7, this would be checkmate. However, it will be shortly anyway. So after queen takes pawn check, only move his king to f7. And now we continue our attack with our development and forcing the king out into the middle of the board. So as I play these moves, see if you can guess them ahead of time. Bishop to c4 check. Only move as king to g6. Queen to f5 check. King goes to h6. And now the cool finish to guarantee a winning position or checkmate in a couple moves. A very cool technique called a discovered check, which means I check a king by moving a piece or a pawn that was previously in its way out of the way. That's all it means. So this pawn was originally on d2. This is not a check, but when I move it out of the way, it is a check. So this is called a discovered check. The only move black has is to block this check with pawn to g5. And the last move you need to memorize to, to get you into a pretty dead winning position, pawn to h4. Really ganging up on this pawn on g5. It can't move anywhere or take this because, of course, it would be illegal due to this bishop on c1. Okay. And then, you know, if black makes a move like bishop to e7, for example, there is a two-move checkmate here. Pawn takes pawn. It's kind of a cool discovered double check, right? Pretty neat. The king has to go back to g7 and then queen to f7 checkmate. Again, guys, fully realize this is a much more complicated example than the other ones. However, it's important that you start to memorize these kind of more lengthy patterns. Most importantly, you just need to remember that after pawn to f6 on move 2, there's this knight takes e5 temporary sacrifice, followed by queen to h5, and regardless what black does, you're going to take on e5 next move with a very powerful and decisive attack. Alright, so this concludes the video on opening checkmates that you must know. Patterns to recognize, and of course, how to stop 
these early checkmates. The most important one, of course, the form of checkmate in the previous example. Just remember, plunk the knight on f6. Or if you're in this situation, just remember to play pawn to g6 first. All right? Don't let your opponent beat you in four moves. It's very easy to defend against it, and your position will actually be better because of it. Thank you for watching, and be sure to practice the examples with all the videos. Thank you.